Charting Toward Intimacy covers mature topics. Listener discretion is advised. Are you going on a family trip or a vacation anytime soon? Have you thought about how that's going to affect your sex life? A lot of times we hear advice about vacation sex and about how awesome it is. But a lot of times that advice has nothing to do with big family trips that involve sharing a house with lots of people or a room with lots of kids in it. That is what we're going to be talking about today, family vacations and your sex life. Welcome to Charting Toward Intimacy, the sex and intimacy podcast for Catholic women. My name is Ellen Holloway. I am a Catholic speaker and coach who specializes in sex and marital intimacy, and I am on a mission to help you actually enjoy and desire good, holy sex with your spouse. And today joining me is my awesome semi-regular co-host, Kathleen Chavanis. All right. Vacation sex. It is that time of year. We're going on vacations. It really is. Oh, yeah. we have like so many trips coming up. We do. do uh, well, we're going, we're leaving tomorrow for, which is not real time tomorrow by the time people are listening to this, but we are right. leaving tomorrow. As I think when this goes this. out, you will be on said vacation. <laughs> I will be on vacation. Yeah. Yeah. So we're leaving tomorrow for a week at the beach. And then in August, we have a weekend away with friends with a couple other families um, just like a long weekend. So yeah, we've got lots of lots of little trips coming up, but none of it is like just our family unit, you know, it's like all with other people. That is, is the same situation yeah. as us, which I think is why we are going to talk about this topic. So I think yeah. a lot of times people are like, oh, vacation sex. They're going to talk about like how great vacation sex is. Actually, I think we're we're going to talk more about how hard it <laughs> vacation be. sex is. Yeah. Because we have a trip to like a family cabin that is literally like it's one room downstairs and one room upstairs like that. Oh, this is, wow. Yeah. This is not like a, you know, family uh, expansive cabin in the woods. Yes. That's beautiful. This is like old. This is an old cabin with bunk beds. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we've got, you know, a hotel trip where the whole family is in a hotel room. Mm -hmm. Those are, those are fun too. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I think there is like, yeah, when we think of, I think like if you read the title of this podcast, right. You were just like, Ooh, yeah. Vacation sex. Like when it's just you and your spouse off, like that is like almost the best kind of sex right it's right? just there's like just when it's like, just the two of you freedom no, and creativity there's and... so much freedom and so much creativity because honestly i i have found that with me one of the biggest barriers that i come across in like really being able to enter into and enjoy sex like fully is like who is around and where are the children and can they get up and are they going to come knock on the door? Like, right? It's like all of those things where it's just, you're constantly, it just, it keeps this wall up. So when it's just like vacation sex with two of you, it's just like, oh my gosh, all the, all the barriers are down, you know? Right. And it's just the best. So, but that is not the case with summer vacations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with sure. like family vacations. Yes. Definitely and, not the same. You know, this is one of those opportunities I think for for a lot of family vacations where one of the things that we talk about and, and you know, I hear this actually, you know, who t- says this all the time is Christopher West says this all the time whenever he is talking about NFP, but he'll, he'll say something along the lines of like, look, abstinence is not, it, it, it's really just like not that big of a deal is sort of what he's saying because there are tons of reasons why we abstain Mm -hmm. all the time and family vacations when you're all sharing one big room or you have an airbnb and you don't know how thin those walls are and Mm -hmm. you know people aren't kids never sleep well on vacation that's (laughs) that's what i've learned (laughs) number one tip for vacationing with children is a bottle of melatonin gummies that is like, <laughs> that is how we survive. <laughs> you thought you were going to get vacation. tips about vacation sex? 
actually you're just getting tips about vacation sleep (laughs) yeah vacationing in general yeah with children yeah (laughs) melatonin gummies all the way but yeah I think there's a lot of cases where your family vacation your family trip is not going to involve sex there's just there uh, doesn't really seem like there is a way now one thing that I would like you to consider for your family trip, if this is like an extended family trip, is plan a night where like the extended family that you're with takes care of the kids and you have date night and maybe go and get a a cheap hotel room for that night or even just like a few hours, like totally Mm. worth it. Yeah. Or see if maybe like there is something that you can plan for. Let's say it's like grandparents or maybe like aunts and uncles or whatever. Like, hey, how about you guys take all of the kids to this thing today? You know, maybe there's a zoo near where you're vacationing or a water park or something. Like, can you take the kids there today? And then you guys, you and your spouse hang out at the Airbnb. I'm just imagining like a big family gets an Airbnb. I mean, the like vacation that we're going on is with my in-laws. So it's like my mother and father-in-law, my sister-in-law and her family and kids, and then my other sister-in-law. So it's like, it's a full house. It's a lot of people. There's like eight kids in the house, right? There's two, four, six, seven adults. Like it's a big house. Um, but one thing my mother and father-in-law always say is every couple has a date night, so we will watch the kids if you want to go out. And it's just, and it's not like, you know, it's, we can't go do an overnight, but just to get out. And one thing we really started considering more is a date morning, not just a date night, because a lot of the times kids on vacation, by the time nighttime comes around, they're getting crabby, they're overtired. And you just are worried while you're out that like, oh no, like the the kids, like, are they okay? Like, are they, are they acting up? Like, should we hurry up and get back? You know, but if you do a date morning when everybody's fresh and you don't have to worry about them, you can go get breakfast. You can like, you could do whatever, right? That is a really great thing. And just a way of remaining connected throughout that week or however long you're vacationing if sex is not something that's really possible or feasible to have that one-on-one time. And I think we've been kind of realizing that in general that, yeah, like sex is less of a pressure and less of a, like a timed need if we are just remaining connected and getting like husband wife time separate from the kids. That is building that intimacy. Right. Outside of the bedroom that we talk about all the time, like because sex should be a fruit of a deeply intimate relationship, it shouldn't be the glue that's holding your relationship together. And so, like, really in in a healthy marriage with a healthy sexual relationship, a week-long family vacation where sex is off the table, even if it's during a time when sex might typically be on the table, you know, maybe you're trying to avoid and your family vacation happens to be during phase three, like, this shouldn't, this shouldn't break you guys. (laughs) But you can be intentional about making time for intimacy that isn't sex. But also you can be intentional about like finding a time to have sex on vacation. You Mm -hmm. just might have to get creative, like even in the morning, like you can get a hotel room during the day. And actually a lot of hotels will like give you a steep discount. Like if you're just like, I just want a hotel room from like eight to three, right? Like I just, I want this midday hotel room. Like they didn't sell that room last night. Mm -hmm. They would love to make an extra hundred bucks, right? And so you don't have to pay the 250 or whatever. I feel like hotel rooms are so expensive now. (laughs) No, seriously, they really are. But like that might be something really, really great for your marriage. But think about like, okay, if we go out to dinner, we're going to spend a hundred bucks. Like what if you spent that dinner money on a hotel room? That's a really good idea. Something I didn't really ever consider before. It's an idea. I've never actually yeah. done it, but yeah. we haven't <laughs> gone on a idea. ton of like big family trip. This is like this summer. Yeah. <laughs> it's like one of the first where we're like doing these like family trips with the kids 
Because our kids mm-hmm. are like getting old enough now to actually do said kind of things. Yeah. Now we do these vacations twice a year, every year. Woohoo! Every year, yeah. So it's a lot. It's a lot of vacation time with other people, but it's great. These vacations can really be that opportunity of thinking about intentionally building intimacy in ways that aren't sex. Mm-hmm. And thinking about, okay, how can I love my husband in this situation? You, we like talk about love languages all the time, but like this is a great, great opportunity to focus mm-hmm. on his love language because like mm-hmm. you're on vacation, you're outside of like your normal needs. Yeah. You've got other things to balance. I think a lot of times moms are like, feel like, vacation is more stressful than just like daily life. I feel that. But at the same time, Mm -hmm. there are certain things no longer on your plate. And like, if you, you know, if you're just kind of looking objectively, there's stressors that you don't have to deal with. Right. So you Mm -hmm. have more capacity or, or just, or small, like it doesn't even have to be that big. Like I, I think a lot of times we're like, Oh my gosh, I have to, plan so much. I have to think so much about how to, you know, love my spouse through his love language. And it's like, okay, if your spouse is like physical touch, just touch the shoulder as you walk past. Yeah. Yeah. Like That's words of affirmation. Point. Just, Hey, I'm so glad to see you. Mm-hmm. They, you know? Yeah. Those and you know what? That's an interesting point because I think that one thing that tends to happen a lot on vacations when you're like, Vacations when you're with a lot of people, and again, I'm speaking a little bit from experience here. Something that can really happen when you have a lot of families together is sometimes a lot of like just the girls getting together and sort of like complaining about their husbands a little bit, right? Mm. So even something as simple as just not participating in that or, you know what I mean? Or just even like talking about like, well, you know what? Yeah. Like sometimes there's things, but overall I know how blessed and lucky I am because my husband does this or my husband is this, or, you know, like really just uplifting, even if it's not directly to him. But I think that in our conversations, when we are with other people and that kind of seems to be, it's like a downer conversation in that way. I think that affects our outlook towards our spouse then, right? Like if we participate in that and we end up kind of going into the downer mode like you're not going to want to go home (laughs) and like think about like loving or having sex with your husband then right so it's like yeah just watching the conversations we're having when we're with so many other people and really trying and and like listen your husband's not perfect like there's going to be things you can complain about but that's why it's even such a more loving act to intentionally refrain from those conversations and to lift your thoughts about your husband to like the good and the greater, because then it's going to actually, you're helping yourself build and increase desire for him by, by highlighting his strengths. Yeah. I think that's really important. Because what a trip can really do is if you're intentionally focusing on really just building that intimacy in those small little ways it can really build anticipation for coming back together Mm -hmm. when you do get home and you're back in your regular routine. And there can just really be a beautiful coming together and a celebration of the fruits that you intentionally worked very hard in the previous week, or maybe it's just a weekend or whatever amount of time. There's just a, a beautiful like Uh, celebration of that. Yeah, Yeah. I think that's really true. And I think that vacation, especially like we're saying, when it's hard to find time to be together, right? Like physically, like in the sexual union, it's, there's always, it can be more stressful for sure, but I think there still is that sense of novelty, right? Like even if you can't necessarily have sex or you're not comfortable totally having sex in your situation, There's still that sense of novelty. You're in a new place. Maybe you're on the beach. Maybe you're in the woods, right? Like you're in this new environment that can be very romantic. And so I think that leaning into more like public displays of affection 
can be really cool and really good. And and again, it's sort of yeah. like laying that groundwork for sort of like extended foreplay for when you get home, right? But what does it also do? Like it also lets your kids see that you are relaxed, that you are like, you're taking, you're just in a different space. You know what I mean? And that mm-hmm. it's good and that, yeah, mom and dad, like they might be grossed out depending on how old your kids are. And like, that's fine. Like, <laughs> My oldest is starting to get that way and whatever. Like, but when she gets older, to older, Bluey, all my children want us to do is smoochy kiss. I, smoochy kiss. Anybody yes. else in that boat? They're like, mom and dad, smoochy kiss. Yeah. But like just those, <laughs> those public displays of affection that maybe you don't do as often at home. Right. Like, yeah. first of all, this can be like a really good way to kind of get into practicing doing them more. Right. Like at home, especially yeah. in front of your kids and whatnot. But it's also just an example to your kids that like, oh, wow, like mom and dad seem like really relaxed right now. Right. Or like they're just like they're like feeling totally in love right now. Like and it's easier to do it when you're in those novel spaces, you know, when Mm -hmm. you're just. So I think really like like you said, like a little more like butt tapping or whatever, you know what I mean? Or just like leaning into those more those, hugs more kisses more like, hugs more kisses exactly just leaning into those those ways of showing affection even publicly can be very freeing i think to to just your mental state and and yeah and it's just building that sense of intimacy and that sense of desire for when you feel like it's a more appropriate time to actually get it on yeah. And on a completely different note, on more of just a parenting note, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Vacations can be really stressful for children, depending on your your children's temperament. And seeing mom and dad in love, comfortable, feeling safe can really help your children to feel safe and feel calm in like this vacation environment you know Mm because like we think of a week at the beach and we're like oh my gosh like this is it's gonna be great and but your you know your five-year-old your eight-year-old thinks of the week at the beach well I don't have my bed and Mm -hmm. I don't have my toys and I don't have I don't have the things that really make me feel safe and like I don't have the choices that I normally do and right, right like vacation can be can be really stressful for kids and those kinds of things like mom and dad being safe and comfortable and in love can really build that like, oh, this is fine. Like Mm -hmm. mom and dad are fine. I'm fine. And like mom and dad are this solid rock for me. I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point. I like that. We'll be right back with the episode in a moment. How's your sex life? No, really. How is your sex life. Is it fulfilling, enjoyable, and intimate? No? Trust me, you are not alone if your sex life is not what you'd like it to be. But listen up, it does not have to stay that way. You can have the sex life of your dreams that is beautiful, pleasurable, pleasing to God, and just overall awesome. And you can start transforming your sex life today with the Catholic Sex Course for Women. In this course, we dig into your specific pain points, whether that's communication, sex drive and libido, mechanics, church teaching, or maybe mindset and focus. Whatever it is that's standing in the way of you and your spouse having a phenomenal sex life, you can overcome it. Check out the Catholic Sex Course for Women today by clicking the link in the show notes or going to vinesinfullbloom.com slash Catholic Sex. Let's talk like a little bit about charting on vacation Mm, mm. because i if if you are in a nfp need to chart very well season Mm. you have a a serious reason to avoid and you need to really be charting to a t charting on vacation can be a little tough (laughs) Mm. yeah i am like so not in that season because i'm pregnant (laughs) yeah which is a blessing it's nice it's nice (laughs) yeah no i think you're right i think that the things like the the most common obstacles that uh, we encounter when we're charting on vacation, right, is number one, just being out of your routine. Mm-hmm. Um, because you're in a different space, 
you might be on a different schedule, right? Like different wake up time, even like all of that kind of stuff. It gets hard to stick with the routine that you have developed for yourself. And maybe you just forget all of a sudden or or whatever it is. So I think reminders in your phone, maybe extra reminders or alarms or whatnot can be really helpful for that. Another thing is that like your body can also react to the fact that you are not in your routine, right? Like all of a sudden you're just like, wait a minute, I'm on day 15 and I should be like seeing more fertile mucus right now. Why am I not? Like Mm -hmm. that could just be your body being like, wait, this is not typical for us. Like we are, we are out of routine. What are we doing? And your body can respond to that, right? So I think if you start seeing differences on vacation, like recognize that that's normal and maybe almost expect it so that you're not surprised when you're like, wait, yeah, this isn't typical point. for me, right? And then the last thing is, especially if you end up having to share bathrooms, is concern over people seeing some of your charting implements. Like maybe you're mm-hmm. using the monitor or maybe you have LH tests or, you know, whatever it is. And this is so much easier said than done, but I am always a proponent of just having no shame because there is no shame about those things and about knowing your body, right? But not feeling like you have to hide those things from other people seeing because I think they become amazing conversation starters. If children Mm -hmm. see them, if other adults who don't chart see them, right? Like, what is this? You know, like, oh, well, this is what I use to blah, blah, blah. And oh, well, what do you mean? Like, and all of a sudden you could be opening up an entire conversation that could really change somebody's life. Or at Absolutely. least give them insight into like a little bit more about you and how seriously you take things and how incredible it is that you know your body so well, right? And then especially for children to see those things. Like I never hide my stuff from my kids and I they ask what it is and I go into a full on explanation that maybe they can take in and maybe they can't. I don't know. Yeah. But <laughs> I but feel like, like my just... four year old knows more about cervical mucus. Oh than yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. My doctor. <laughs> One time my, my oldest son, who's now nine, but he must've been like five or so at the time, five or six. And he told me that a uterus looked like sort of like a steer skull you know, like a, like a cow yeah, skull. Absolutely. Because I had like just gotten done like showing, I was like studying, I think for my, for my test, for my like certification. And I had this, you know, PowerPoint up of like the female anatomy and they were like, what are you even doing? And I was like, oh, well look. And I was explaining the uterus and what it does and all that kind of stuff. And then he came back to me, he goes, kind of looks like a steer skull. And I was like, yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. But, anyway, but yeah, but really like, Opening it, like, let normalize knowing your body. Normalize to your children what you do so that, you know, when they get to be teenagers or young adults or whatever, this isn't new information to them. You've already, they, this is old hat because they've seen mom doing it, you know, for forever. That's like such a beautiful thing to be able to pass on to your kids. I think I just have a few more thoughts on charting and, and things like that when you're out of your routine is like, don't let it take you by surprise. Like if you're prepping for a trip, like take a few minutes to just think about charting and when you're going to make sure it happens. Like, and just like mm-hmm. allow that to be something that you, you think about and just like put on your mind. Cause That I think is really what happens is we're so used to charting, especially if you've been charting for several years, might be so used to doing it in your normal routine that you just like don't even think about it. But then you're on vacation. You're like, oh, my gosh, how have I missed mucus observations for two days straight? I never do this, you know. So just like give yourself five minutes to think about it and be like, okay, how am I just going to make sure that I definitely do this. And like, I, I'm a big proponent of like phone reminders. Those are, can be really helpful or, you know, or just like habit stacking. And it's like, okay, I'm not going to forget to brush my teeth on vacation. So how can I put the charting stuff with brushing my teeth like right. or yeah, yeah, things yeah. like that? Right. And it's just, just like, just think about it. Give it, give it some thought that can actually just right. eliminate a lot of issues. And then the I other really thing smart. is, a couple of days before you're leaving for vacation, 
figure out where you're at in your cycle. You you know, if you've been charting for at least a few months, you're going to have a decent idea just even a week ahead or less, right, of where you are in your cycle. Mm -hmm. And like take note of whether charting is even necessary, right? Let's say you are going to be gone for a weekend and you are in the last couple of days of your cycle and a new cycle is going to start and you're just going to be gone for like three days. Do you need to take your charting stuff with you? Probably not. Like if yeah. you're ju- if your period's gonna start, like th- you know, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Or like, are you are you on a vacation where sex is not going to be possible? And even though you're gonna be transitioning from that fertile phase to the infertile phase, sex is like n- off the table. Does it matter if you chart as diligently as mm-hmm. you typically do? Maybe not, you know, and again, I'm a big proponent, like chart well, get the good data, right? Especially if you're trying to avoid and you have a serious reason to avoid, but also like look at the circumstances. Like, do we actually need this information Yeah. in these couple of days? Maybe not. And you could even reach out to your instructor and yeah. just kind of say like, what, I mean, what do you think about this? And they can kind of, there are like, Again, if if you don't have if you don't have to have all available days available to you, right? There are some lax ways to chart and kind of get the info, but not necessarily like as early as you might, right? And you can kind of drop down some things or whatever. If it's like I don't even need that info, right? <laughs> this right, cycle yeah. because we're not going to be having sex on this family trip where we're all sharing one room with like five bunk beds. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, that's a great point. That's so really I think great. it's just, just take a look at where mm-hmm. you're at. Take a look at what the situation is. Don't let it be a stressor thing. You know, it's yeah. just, it's, it's okay. And then also like reach out to your instructor as well prior and then after because let's say you did miss a couple of days of charting. Maybe you're gone for a long time and, and and your chart is just like not as full as it normally is. Like send that chart to your instructor because again, a lot of times there are alternative methods of assessing that fertile window. There's other rules that can be used and they can help you if you kind of like, if you kind of drop the ball and you're yeah. like, I don't actually know where I'm at right, in my cycle right, right, because... Yeah. I missed like four days and it's like they can help you get back on track and figure out where you're at in your cycle. So don't sleep on your instructor. Your instructor is there to help. Yeah, that's a great idea. And have a great vacation. Have a great vacation. (laughs) Absolutely. Thanks so much for listening. If you are not already following us on Instagram, be sure to check us out at charting toward intimacy. And if you listen to podcasts on a platform that gives you the option to rate or review, we'd love for you to do that because it helps us spread the word about the podcast. If you ever have questions, comments, or episode topic ideas, please reach out to us. We love to hear from you. You can reach out on Instagram or send us an email. Our email is in the show notes until next time.